Hello and welcome to a different kind of episode from me. This is Mel Make Stuff. My name is Melissa and this weekend I am going to be vlogging my trip to Vermont Sheep and Wool. I've taken the day off today so it's Friday today and I am driving up to meet with Salma of Little Big Knits and Miga of Skeins of Dreams. We're meeting up in person for the first time and I'm going to attempt to vlog this weekend more successfully than last year's ride back during which I filmed the entire thing with my phone held in the wrong direction. <laughs> so I'm trying to do a little bit better this time and I'll take you all along with me so I hope you enjoy this. I've never really done a whole lot of like day in the life vlogging type stuff so this will be an, a little bit of an experiment for me but this morning we're going to take care of a few errands. I'm going to run to the gym and um, just pick up a few things that I need for the trip and then we will get going. So I'll take you along with me for all of that. All right, I'm here at the gym. So some of you may know I do Olympic style weightlifting, which is uh, the snatch and the clean and jerk with barbells. I know a lot of people are familiar with this, but also a lot of people aren't. I usually train four times a week and so I've been working with an actual Olympic weightlifting coach for about three months now, a little over three months, and I just don't like missing a session. So uh, I usually work out in the evenings. Today I'm working out in the morning so we'll see how this goes. Thank you. All right, that was better than I thought it was gonna go working out in the morning when I'm not used to that. Now we are headed to get some gift bags because I have a couple little presents for Selma and Miga, which I will show you all before they get to see them later. And then we'll get on the road. half an hour before I need to leave and I still have to clean up and finish packing like get myself cleaned up so um of course I'm running late as usual but I wanted to show you what I got for Selma and Mika so I made us these project bags so the pink one's mine I made this one first and it's like there's some parts of it you know it was the first time I was making this pattern in a long time and so I screwed it up a little bit, so I'm going to keep that one. But these two, this one's for Miga and this is for Selma. If anybody is interested in this pattern, here it is. I got this as a PDF online, so feel free to seek out that person's pattern. And so what I did was, so this is all some linen that I had in my stash. And I sewed this, I pieced this with the machine and then hand quilted one side of the bag. And then the other side is just a solid linen. And as you can see... When it's unzipped, you have a separating zipper here, so it's just like a little open out box pouch, as the name suggests. I really like this for socks. I have a couple of these I've made in the past that are plain that I really like using for very small projects, socks or hats, things like that. So that is the first thing that I have for them. The other things are, let's see, I got one of these for each of us as well. So I have this for myself. Also one skein of the Harrisville Daylights. This is the one that has a little bit of a color mixed in with the, the natural colored Cormo wool. So this one is the purple, which is called Lint. It's gonna be hard to tell in this light, but so there's one skein of that for everybody. And then I also ordered this yarn, which is Goosey Fibers, I think it's just sock, Goosey Sock, Weekend Upstate is the colorway, so I chose the same color for all of us because I thought it would be cool to see like what we each do with it. Got a little 
reusable bag with cats on it. These I love for going to festivals. And I also got these really cute little cat progress keepers. So I hope this is focusing. These I just got because I liked I liked them and we all have cats and like cats. So that's, <laughs> that's why I got that. Goosey Fibers is a Massachusetts based dyer. So I wanted to have something from Massachusetts to bring. And Harrisville is also quite close just over the border in New Hampshire. So these are all sort of like local-ish things. And, and so yeah, that is what I am bringing for Selma and Mika. say we're coming to say hi hello. hello finally here together in person yes the dog is on. yeah these <laughs> so we have not been to the festival yet <laughs> these are just gifts that we have been given <laughs> yeah. people might have gone a little crazy maybe a little bit <laughs> and, and we have snacks and maple yeah. syrup as well. all sorts of canadian specialties so that this is what we're doing tonight. And project bags. And project oh, bags. Yes, All the project, project bags. Bag. <laughs> yep, here. This one is from Selma. Yeah. We're all wearing our knitwear even though it's a little too hot in here. Yes. <laughs> so, all right.
Hello, so we're back here at my house and this is the section where I'm going to show you all of the yarn related stuff that I got and I am going to try to talk to you about it in terms of the projects that I'm thinking about making with this yarn just so that it's not just like showing you a bunch of stuff. And at the end, I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about my one week vest project, which I started right before this trip and I finished as soon as I got back. So first I'm going to show you the gifts that Selma and Miga brought for me. Selma brought me this wonderful project bag, which I immediately started using for my vest project. It's a medium sized bag, I would say, and it easily fit the yarns that I needed for this vest. So I, I know this is a rather small garment, but I, I would say this is a good size project bag. This is by Jenna Rose, who is a Canadian bag maker. It's really nice. I love this bag. So thank you, Selma. The other thing that Selma brought for me is this beautiful skein of Akara yarns in the colorway dark like my soul, <laughs> which I appreciated. And this is really a perfect color for me. So she really nailed it there. And so for this, we were going back and forth about what I could make with this because it is a silk and linen blend, which is sort of unusual. Silk and linen fingering, 490 yards. So it's not a whole lot of yardage, but for me, I could maybe get like a very small top out of it. Amiga had suggested a pattern that she made recently for a friend, which is the Lazy Daisy Crop by Rachel Kurihara. There's a possibility I might be able to get like a, a short version of that top out of this yarn without doing the embroidery. I think I would probably leave the embroidery off. Uh, Miga did the same thing in her project that she made, and that might be a really nice use of this. So the other option would be maybe a single skein shawl project, but like little shawls I have a hard time wearing, so remains to be seen. Miga also spoiled both of us, so she got each of us a sweater quantity of Woodsong Farm DK, and mine is in the landscape colorway, which is also just an excellent color for me. I'm really excited to make something out of this. This is 100% fin, which you don't see very often. Uh, it says family loved and non-GMO fed sheep, natural colored wool dyed to organic standards. So very cool. I have not tried this yarn ever before. And Selma had brought a book with her on the trip, which she had checked out from the library, but she brought so that I could see it. She thought I would like it and she was totally right. And I immediately ordered it. So it was waiting for me when I got back home. This is Nora Gon's relatively new book, Knit, Fold, Pleat, Repeat. As is common with Nora Gon books, she sort of takes an idea or technique and then really just does iterations of it. And a lot of the designs end up being like at first glance, like sort of a little odd. But then you start looking at them more and more and it's like, oh, I actually really like that. So I'm going to be talking probably a lot more about this book in upcoming episodes, but I wanted to show you the project that I have in my mind picked out for this Woodsong Farm yarn right now. And that is this design, which is called Facet. So you can see, you know, this is the sleeve podcast now. So we have some very uh, unique geometric shaping going on at the bottom of these sleeves. I might try to make these a little bit longer. This just below the elbow length is sort of a tricky length on me, but that's an easy enough mod. So that, I think, it, you know, the body is plain, and I think that's really going to show off the beautiful variations in this hand-dyed yarn. So I'm very excited to start that hopefully soon. Thank you so much, Mika. Now on to things that I actually purchased at the festival. So you might remember from my Rhinebeck video last year that I had gotten a shawl pin for my mother-in-law for a cardigan that I had made her for Christmas. And I wanted one for myself. So I have a gold shawl pin, like a gold colored shawl pin, and I wanted one that was silver just so I had, you know, one of each metal. And so this is the one that I decided to get. It's from the same maker, which is Bialo Payton Designs. Here is the spelling of that. And she does sell online if you want to go and look at, um, at what they have to offer there. This is the medium size shawl pin. So she does have larger ones. And I think the one I got for my mother-in-law might have been a larger size than this, but this, this is a good size for what I need most of the time. The first yarn that I ended up buying at the festival was from a place called Phantom Farm. It's F-A-N-T-O-M, Farm. I have zero idea if they sell online. I sort of doubt that they do because it was one of those places that only accepted cash or check. So that's one thing to note about these smaller festivals, if you're going to them, is that you wanna bring cash. A lot of the vendors aren't gonna really be hooked up for uh, credit card payment. Some of them will, but some of them won't. I ended up getting two skeins of this, which is approximately a sport weight. We estimated it's around 1100 to 1200 yards, and it is a mohair, wool, alpaca, and nylon blend. And this color is coming up 
very nicely on the camera. It's a blend of navies and grays. And so I'm really looking to make something that's again gonna show off the variation in this yarn. So not an overly complicated pattern in terms of texture, but this is enough for a sweater for me, depending on the gauge. The pattern that I'm thinking about for this yarn at the moment is the Daily Sweater by Knit Tail Deraco, which is not going to be released until November. So I have to wait a little bit, but obviously I have enough <laughs> projects going on that I can wait a, a month or two for that. It's a little bit of an oversized sweater that I think will work well. There's just a little bit of texture going through it for interest, and I think that will keep my attention enough and also allow me to alternate skeins. I'm definitely gonna be alternating this stuff in whatever garment I end up making. Miga also ended up getting some yarn from this place. Uh, if you watch her podcast, which I obviously highly recommend, uh, she got sort of a reddish, hers is reddish pinkish orange. So she showed that on her podcast as well if you wanna see another colorway from this farm. The other skein that I got from the same booth was one of those that just really attracted me, like I beelined to it. And I didn't have a project in mind for this, but I knew I would come up with something and I would regret it if I didn't get this skein. I would probably be thinking about it. So this is uh, 8.9 ounces is how they sell their yarn in, in terms of a price per ounce. And this is a singles yarn. So if I bring it up close, you can tell that it is a single ply. And so for me, I don't love to use single ply yarns for garments, just for wear issues. And so I knew that this would become part of a shawl, but I didn't quite know what one. So the night before when we were talking, we had discussed the dotted rays, which Selma had brought with her and Miga was actually wearing at the festival. That holds a fingering weight together with the mohair and the Giselle shawl by Camilla Hoyer Adamson, who is a wonderful designer. And I am leaning towards the Giselle shawl. So the Giselle is sort of, if you like the half and half wrap by Pearl Soho, which I, I assume most of us are familiar with at this point, the Giselle shawl is sort of like a, a step up variation on that where you have it's this, a similar idea where you have one triangle that's one yarn, and then you do the other triangle, which is a lace pattern in a mohair held singly. So, uh, you know, just one strand of mohair. And so knowing that I was probably going to be using this for one of those two shawls, like after I had started thinking about it at the festival, I, at another booth, got some mohair to go with this. So that is here. It's a very coral pink which I think can play well with a lot of the colors in here. So this single skein is really like reddish, brownish, orange. And this has an, this mohair has enough orange tones in it that I think it will go well, whether I'm holding these strands together or whether they're just next to each other in the Giselle shawl. So this mohair is from Ball and Skein. Uh, it is the Noor base. Uh, it's 50 grams, 455 yards. Colorway is Slip Rock and I got two skeins of that. So that should be enough for either shawl, but right now I'm leaning toward the Giselle. It's around this time that we ran into a viewer who had brought us a present. So thank you so much, Suzanne. She had brought us some uh, Vermont maple syrup, which I am so excited to try. I'm saving it, but I also wanna try it soon. So maybe pancakes this weekend. And I also got a great recommendation from Suzanne's daughter who was there with her at the festival uh, for a local butcher shop. She said, you have to try the sausages. And I went there on my way out of town and bought a bunch of their sausages and brought them home for my husband. I think he was a little sad he didn't get to go to the festival. So I, uh, I brought that for him and, and he was satisfied with it. So the sausages have been amazing. So uh, all in all, just a great food trip in general. So thank you, Suzanne. And it was really nice meeting you and your daughter. The next purchase that I made, so Miga had brought me over to a booth to look at some colors with her uh, that she was trying to decide between. And that booth was the Purgatory Falls Alpaca Farm. And she was looking at a couple different colors they do a lot of natural dyes. And so inside the the barns where some of these booths were, there wasn't always great lighting. And so we were like using each other to sort of gauge the colors. And she ended up buying this color. And as she had it in her hand, I was like, I really want that. <laughs> I really want, if there's enough of it left, I'm gonna get it too. And I, so I just straight up copied her. So you will have seen this on her, um, her podcast already, but this is the Purgatory Falls worsted weight. It is 80% alpaca and 20% merino, naturally dyed. And I have enough of this to make a poncho, 
which is what I'm leaning towards right now. They had a sample in the booth of the Stone Point poncho, which is a little bit of an older pattern, I think 2017. And so that is what I'm leaning toward right now. That's what Miga had started with it. I hope I'm not um, doing a spoiler. <laughs> Sorry if so. I, I don't have a poncho and I'm sort of interested to try it out. For something that is this much alpaca content, I'm not looking to choose a garment with structure. I want something that's meant to be drapey so that the, the yarn will sort of complement that. So that's what I'm thinking right now is the stone point. And then as if that wasn't enough uh, going overboard, the last thing that I got was a sweater quantity of the Green Mountain Spinnery Music. Here is the tag. This is a DK weight, I believe. Yes, DK weight, 100% American wool. And this is the colorway Brick House, which is exactly as the name indicates, just a really nice red brick color. And this I got for the Vesper with a Twist by Thea Coleman. So I really like a lot of Thea Coleman's patterns, but they tend to eat yarn because they're often heavily cabled. And I don't tend to buy quite enough yarn. Like I'm at the point in my stash acquisition um, attitude where I will buy what I think I need for a sweater quantity, depending on the weight of yarn. And oftentimes that's enough for a plain sweater or one with a little bit of texture, but it's not enough for like a heavily cabled garment or one with a big collar, which is both of those things are, are part of this Vesper with a twist pattern. So I made sure to buy enough specifically to make that pattern so I don't have to do this yarn chicken thing I'm always doing. And I don't have to stress out about that while I'm knitting. So that is what this is going to be. The last thing that I want to talk to you about today is my finished object that I'm wearing, which is the Burgos Vest by Rosa Pomar. Before the festival, uh, Selma and Miga and I had all been texting each other like, what are you bringing and what projects are you bringing with you? And you know, just the normal sort of excited stuff before you go to a festival. And Miga had said that she was looking at some vest patterns and she had sent this Burgos Vest in the chat. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, I want to cast that on right now. <laughs> So this pattern is written at a worsted weight gauge. And what the designer had done for her sample was to hold one yarn for the entire vest and then marl in different colors of leftover mohairs that she had from other projects. I have a ton of leftover like little balls of mohair in my stash and I have zero idea what to do with them, but I don't like throwing them away, you know? So I decided this would be perfect for that. The other thing that I really wanted to use for this project is trying to use up this uh, Cotswold wool that I've had in my stash. I have used it for multiple projects. You've seen this before as the background color for some color work in a, a Kate Davies a big oversized bulky sweater that I made maybe about a year ago. And I still had more of it left. And I was like, okay, that looks from the pattern instructions to be a perfect amount to just do this vest and then I will have that yarn sort of out of my stash. And I like this yarn. It's a little bit hard to use. So Cotswold is um, a long wool and it is not soft. It's not, I've made sweaters with it that I do wear against my skin, but it's not, um, I would say if you're sensitive at all, uh, this might not be your thing, but holding it together with some mohair or, you know, other yarns that I had in my stash, I was like, this is probably gonna make this quite soft, actually. Here is the range of colors that I chose to hold together with this base yarn for this project. So here we have three different colors of 100% alpaca lace. So this is just lace weight yarn. It's not like a, a super hairy, like a silk mohair. And so I have had those in my stash for a long time. I got these yarns from my sister years ago. And then I also chose to use these colors of mohair. I also used a sort of more medium pink and these were just leftovers from old projects. And then I also used a little bit of my hand spun, which again you saw as a contrast color in that Kate Davies, uh, that big bulky cardigan. So my initial vision for this vest was to start with the neutral colors being held together with this main color here. And it's a top-down vest, so you cast on, you knit the back, then you pick up shoulders for the fronts, you knit them down, join at the underarm, and go down. So you can make it as long as you want. 
you also really have the opportunity to add in more stitches at the bust if you need a smaller size at your shoulder but a larger size at the bust you can add on more stitches at your underarm to um, accommodate for that so that's nice initially i had been planning to just do stripes of those contrast colors but then as i had started knitting on them on the trip i thought you know i actually want this to look like somebody has just painted like taken some of these contrast colors and painted across the the width of the vest especially once i started trying to add in the hand spun and I was already sort of playing with texture, like the vest is written to be stockinette, and I was already throwing in like pearl rows on the right side, things like that, just to make a little bit of variation in the texture. Then I decided to throw in some like impromptu intarsia techniques, and I've never done intarsia before, but I'm very interested in it. Well, I've never purposely done intarsia. Back when I was a kid and like experimenting with color work, I did some, you know, un I unvented how to do intarsia like as a child and it was a mess you know so I was sitting there trying to figure out like how to wrap the yarn so that there wouldn't be a hole and and I had asked Miga and she was like well you know let's let's look up something and so we looked up like a quick how how to twist yarns for intarsia on, on my phone and and I just ended up sort of doing what felt right and seeing if it made a hole and uh and if it did then I would go back and fix it and so what I ended up doing is is this, as you can see, and I, I'm really happy with it, and I'm now really interested to try an intarsia project very soon. I did make this vest slightly shorter than the pattern indicated, and I made the rib a little bit longer at the bottom. It just felt like it was gonna be a little bit too short the way it was written. I think was only maybe four or five rows of ribbing at the bottom, and I like something a little bit thicker there, so that's what I did. This would be a very easy pattern to just continue on and make super long, which I think I will do in the future. That is very appealing to me at the moment, so we'll see if I get to that. So that is my recap of the 2022 Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. I had an absolutely wonderful time meeting up with Selma and Miga in real life. We've talked online a bunch and we have, you know, met up on Zooms and we have watched each other's videos for a long time. And so just meeting up with them in person was delightful. Uh, I can vouch that they are every bit as wonderful in person as they are on their, their videos. And, um, and I can't wait to do it again. So hopefully we'll be meeting up in the future for another festival or another hangout or, or whatever. So I really hope that if you have any yarn festivals or fiber festivals, anything like that in your vicinity, that you go ahead and attend them. You know, like you don't need to go to Rhinebeck uh, to have a great experience at a festival and feel like you're getting, you know, the the experience of wearing your knitwear and getting to feel all the fibers and seeing a large variety of different yarns and different animals. That kind of thing doesn't only happen at Rhinebeck, you know? Like, I, I've attended Rhinebeck every year for the last, I don't know, four or five years or so, uh, other than 2020, obviously. And I live relatively close to there, but I feel like I've had a great festival experience this year already, and I don't necessarily need to go to Rhinebeck. So if you're feeling FOMO over that, seek out a festival in your area and, and check it out. It's a lot of fun. All right, take care and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.